Okay, so our third objective is to be able to add up the terms in the arithmetic sequence. Sequence. So this is going to be find the sum of an arithmetic sequence. So I can only sum a finite number of terms because the number keeps getting bigger and bigger as I add more terms. So we're just going to sum the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence and see that there's a formula for it. So we already kind of looked at this idea of how to be clever in adding up a whole bunch of numbers that have some pattern to them. So we're going to let A sub N be just an arbitrary arithmetic sequence, just some generic one with the first term A sub 1 and a common difference D. Then the sum of the first N terms can be found in two ways. So this is the notation that's used. It's called a partial sum. It says sum up the first n terms of the sequence. So it's a partial sum. Okay, so you can look at this summation symbol and here's one of the reasons we learned some about it and it says let k go from 1 to n and then stop. And this is the formula for any old arithmetic sequence. Well, it turns out that this formula will give you the sum, but we could actually figure out where the formula comes from, like this. So I have n terms, and I'm just writing out a few at the front and the back. And then I'm going to turn that backwards and put it right below and I think you'll see why in a minute. Okay so this is S sub n and this is S sub n. Just one's written in one order and the other one's written in the other order. But look what happens when I add them together. I'm going to get A sub 1 plus A sub n plus a sub 2 plus A sub n minus 1 plus and so on and look how here at the end I get A sub n plus A sub 1. Oh this is that same idea as what we did before where A sub 1 plus A sub n is A sub 1 plus n minus 1 d, right? So this is 2 A sub 1 plus n minus 1 d. Oh look here's 2 A sub 1 plus n minus 1 d. Every pair, every pair is adding up to that same number. So then all I need to know is how many pairs. And we already talked about this. Of if I have 24 terms, then I have 12 pairs. So that's where this formula comes from. Okay, so we need to find the sums here. And we can see that we're adding 4, adding 4. So when you can just see what the D is, you can just write it down. Say D is 4. I'm adding 4 each time to get the new term. A sub 1 is negative 1. And then I'm adding up terms until I get to this nth one. So this says a sub n equals negative 1 plus n minus 1 times 4. So the nth partial sum equals n over 2 times 2 a sub 1, which is negative 1, plus n minus 1, and our d is 4. So this is the formula. We can simplify it. We have negative 2 plus 4n minus 4 in our parentheses times n over 2. So I have 4n minus 6 times n over 2. Make sure I got the formula right. 2a1 plus n minus 2. Yep. So this is our formula for the first n terms of this sum. So let's look at number 44. You can see that the jumps are 3. 
So D is 3 and A sub 1 is 2. But now we're going to have to figure out how many terms there are. So A sub N equals 41. But that equals A1 plus N minus 1 times this D. So do you see how the thing that you don't know is the N, but you have an equation that only has N in it, so you can solve for N. So you get 41 equals 2 plus 3N minus 3. So 41 equals 3N minus 1. 3N equals 42. So that means N must equal 14. So this is the 14th term. So that tells me I'm trying to add up the first 14 terms, so I write S sub 14. So now I know the number that goes in the over 2 part is 14. Then I have 2 times my A sub 1 of 2. So this is the A sub 1. And then I have N is 14 minus 1 times D, which is 3. So I'm going to be able to find this sum, 7 times 4 plus 39, 13 times 3. So this is 7 times 43, looks like 301. So if you add the first 14 terms of this series, it adds up to 301. So let's look at um, these other two in class together. And then let's try and get to these word problems in class together. And that's it for this section.